Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, D'Anthony, it's here. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at this in a camera. It's heavy, too. This is a good 14 pounds, this fucking thing. The Sarah Williams <laughs> Worst Fan Award. Yep. Shining examples of Drinking Bros Sports Overhyped Assholes Award is out. It's here. It's in our studio. It will live in here forever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and read off the engraved nominees here. Mm -hmm. Steven Edward, 2018, Michigan fan. Who will forget that guy? Um, I won't, certainly, because he's on the <clears throat> big board behind me. Yeah. Uh, he lost a signed Urban Meyer pick to me that is hanging up in our studio. And then he went on a just – he lost his mind after – It's understandable, though. There's a lot of uh, Michigan fans. I feel like the university should take all that money that they're spending <laughs> on their uh, underachieving head coach and just pay for <laughs> therapy for their fans. Did you read that article in Sports Illustrated yeah. I posted today? If you haven't, it is a Michigan fan who is also a writer for Sports Illustrated who said, I've already given up on the game, which is Ohio State versus Michigan this year because I don't want any more misery in my life. He said, they've broken me, as in Ohio State has broken me. I hope, and reading this article was the greatest thing I've ever had the, uh, the pleasure of uh, sitting down on the toilet to pop open and scroll through on my phone. Because I hope every single Michigan fan feels like that. They feel mentally and physically broken yeah. by Ohio State. I mean, it's been a long time. Do. <laughs> a, real, a real long time. At nine, nine years now. Coming up on nine years. Uh, what, 16 out of the last 17 years? And the only year they won, by the way, and he points this out in this article, is really funny. I mean, he really went through all the stages of grief. He goes, look, the only year we won in the last fucking 19 years mm -hmm was when we had a, an interim head coach where, remember Jim Trestle got fired mm. for Tattoo Gate, and we had uh, Luke Fickle. And by the way, Luke Fickle's gone on to massive success um, at Cincinnati. He tried to get picked off by, who was it, uh, Colorado? and Somebody recently, yeah. Detroit. Um, I know the, the Lions were looking at him for, I want to say offensive coordinator or something like that. Either way, he's gone on a massive success after that, but that was the only year they beat us was with – an interim head coach, so I'm amped about that. He has uh, disappeared. We've never heard from Stephen Edward again. He got banned. Uh, next up was Kalen Cothran. Am I saying that right? Yep. Good, because I spelled it wrong purposely on the trophy. I've never been able to say his name right, ever. It's a weird one, spelling and uh, just saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame fan, 2019. Now, here's the difference of where you can come back from being an asshole and being beloved. Kalen... Um, well, I, he's got a fantasy football team. A, a, no, a, a league. Nay, a <laughs> league, not a team. A whole league named after him where we uh, celebrate the Rudy Rudiger. Uh, I call it a conspiracy theory. Look, Bush Bush did 9-11, right? Yep. And uh, he probably also did. He probably had something to do with Bush Sr. did with Rudy, right? That's not a real thing. Um, well, Bush Sr. was in office when Notre Dame won its only national t title, 1988, right? <laughs> well, that's the year he got elected. It was 1988. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, was that the, <laughs> the only title they've won? No, I think they've won some back in the day, but that was the most recent, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Um, either way, he, he's a beloved figure now in, in drinking bro sports, but it did spell his name wrong because it deserves it. Um, deserves it. And then Sarah Williams, obviously, the, the award is named after her. She's the LSU fan who lost her mind and told me to go back to the new guy and then proceeded to try to call <laughs> She's us been the worst so far. Facebook. Just because, like, even Stephen Edward, uh, he uh, he just couldn't shut the fuck up. Like, every single post was about Michigan. And he just posted 90 posts a day yeah, about Yeah, and Michigan. how everybody else was wrong and, and all this stuff, and they weren't because Michigan Michigan's, got let up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah Williams' team actually won. <laughs> You know you were a fucking asshole if the, the award's named after you and your team won the national championship. Yeah. That's how <laughs> Yeah, she's uh, just a useless, useless human being. Um, now she's useful, <laughs> and she's on her desk, and she'll be on this set for the, the rest of her life. And obviously there's a lot of slots open for engraved. And the beauty of this award is, like, people don't try to win it. They just do mm -hmm. win it. 
So we'll select somebody at the end of uh, the year. Typically, it's in college football. Somebody, somebody had a had a great idea of like, man, I think it's going to be all Astros fans this year. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a very good chance it'll be an Astros fan this year. Because they're already starting. Like, look, Oof. the Astros' position at this point is pretty much indefensible. So what? Yeah. I, what I've seen lately is just like hating on other teams about whatever the fuck they can find to try to distract from the fact that their franchise is a fucking joke. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is. It's a joke. I mean, that uh, franchise is a joke now to me, at least. Like, I don't pay to me. Me, me too, man. I don't pay any attention to what they're doing over there at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. I'm glad that fucking. Uh, uh, What's his nuts went to the Yankees. Um, Garrett Cole. Cole, yeah, nope. and I'm, I'm, hopefully all the rest of their players will leave as well. It's weird, man. There's a there's a dark cloud hanging over baseball right now, and uh, I'm not sure how it's going to be cleared up unless <coughs> it's going to take a McGuire Sosa type effort from somebody. Maybe, yeah. Um, we'll um, see what happens, but um, there, uh, there's been some talk that even in and in, in the in spring training, the people are throwing at him, but I don't think so. Like three of the guys that have been so they've been hit seven times, seven times, yeah. But the Reds have been hit eight first. Mm-hmm. Second of Lee, which is not a word, uh, the two guys that are actually involved in all of this, Bregman and Altuve, were hit with off-speed pitches. Yes. So like, and then three of the guys, three out of the seven, were fucking minor league players. So I don't think any of this is yeah. real. Nobody's throwing at anybody in fucking spring training. Um, and I'm looking up the dates here because we <coughs> we want to, let's see, ooh, the 26th is the opening date. Let me check our calendar here because you and I always That's do a, a Monday, right? Yeah. You and I always do a baseball preview show. So for the audience at home, because everybody's been asking about this, when are we doing the preview show? Because we've been just on fire the last, I think we've been doing no, wait, the March show three or 26 is Thursday, so it'll be the 24th, I guess. 24th so the, the our mlb special will be the 24th we will be picking our world series winners all that other stuff um same as we do every year but uh i want to let the the audience know that that is the date of that show um we'll have a guest on next week who is christmas abbott uh she will be our crossfit legend she goes fucking wild on this one mm-hmm. um that'll be on the 10th um and then uh the 17th will be obviously our march madness mm-hmm. show where we, uh, Which we is really St. Patrick's Day. Break them down, pick them down, and we'll be getting <clears throat> fucked up that day. All yeah, right. Jared will be here. Yep. And so will uh, a special guest. Yeah. Although I don't know if he's going to be on the show. He'll be on the show, but I don't know if he'll be on that day. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I can, t- I can promise you this. We're getting fucked up, and this is my favorite time of the year. March Madness, to me, started this week where a lot of these games now matter because uh, there's, a, there's a bubble watch. Um there's a lot of last second uh, love going around. Shout out to Stephen Edward, who Ohio State beat Michigan again. That was a big one for the Big Ten. Uh, my bold prediction here, man, for for this tournament is uh, ten teams from the Big Ten will get in. Ten out of twelve. That is a very very bold prediction, but I, I believe it to be true. That conference is just way way too fuck fucking good. And I can I can go ahead and give you a fucking roster Thomas preview here uh, for six months from now. I'm going to be saying the same thing about the SEC in football this year. That is going to be a fucking gauntlet that I want nothing to do with, mm-hmm. and uh, it's and it's not because of what you think. It's because of the way the schedules are set up. I was started to, to look at some of the schedules next year. Some teams are jumping and playing teams in other divisions, and they're not playing in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Like Georgia's playing Alabama next year. That typically doesn't happen until they get to the SEC championship. Yeah. So there's going to be some fun ones there, but but that's going to be a goddamn car crash that I want nothing to do with, as well as that, that is exactly what the Big Ten is in basketball this year. Fucking forget it. You can pretty much bet that the home team is going to win, and that's about it. Um, but all of these teams are ranked, and uh, your your Penn State boys will be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the little boys from Penn State will be there. Well, I think they got rid of all those. <laughs> they'll, but they'll be in the tourney this year, so that'll be fun. Yep. Ohio State will be in the tourney this year, so that'll be fun. We'll have a lot of shit to, to go back and forth on and bet on. Uh, University of North Carolina will not be in it unless they win out in the ACC tournament. But let's face it, that is not going to happen. So it'll be strange to see uh, UNC. I don't even know if they'll make the NIT this year, actually. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't show up if I did. Uh, some people don't. Um, some people don't. Um, I know how, uh, God, who was it, Kentucky one year just skipped it? They said, fuck it, we're good. Uh, somebody, I don't remember yeah. who it was. 
Um, but yeah, uh, and I'm a little under the weather today. I got uh, coronavirus, trying to shake it. We'll see what happens. Um, but I heard that gin. Gin? Yeah, we'll cure it. Maybe. Find out. Russian. Not Russian. Uh, God damn it. What did I, where did I hear this? Ryan Reynolds gin? Uh, aviator? Yeah. Aviation? Aviation gin? Whatever, Maybe. man. Maybe. You Rich know, get richer on that did shit. Did you see, so uh, uh, the Lakers played the Pelicans again last night. Yes. And... <laughs> Both LeBron and Zion had great games again. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems like Zion's that kind of guy, at least so far in his NBA career, that whenever the game's big, he shows up and plays. Mm-hmm. His team still sucks. Yeah. Compared to the Lakers. I mean, they're good, but they're not. They're fighting for the eighth seed, and <clears throat> God love them, because look, Zion's been out fucking three fourths of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but after the game, <clears throat> it's become here in the last two or three years, especially in, uh, particularly in the, in the NBA and the NFL. It's become really common to see guys exchanging jerseys after games. Mm-hmm. So Zion walked over to, or he was, you know, saying hi to the Lakers players after the game, and he just gave JaVale McGee his jersey and left. He didn't, like, get JaVale McGee's jersey. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is, come on. Here's no, my jersey. Nobody dude. needs. Fuck off. Nobody you're, needs. You're, you're JaVale McGee. Yeah, I mean, I like JaVale McGee. He's a really good dude. Looks like he stinks. No. I, I haven't noticed that. My so my buddy ran security for the Warriors practice facility when I lived in mm-hmm. Oakland. He just looks I, like a dirty dude. And I was there all the time. No, he's in, he's like the nicest guy ever. And Steve Kerr is this is a good story about Steve Kerr. He would get he would be standing at the front and nobody knows who the fuck he is. Even people in Oakland don't know who he is. Yeah. Uh because he's just like some fucking six foot tall white guy. Yeah, you know. Normal looking uh, white dude. With a normalist looking face and hair of all time. Yeah. Very soft spoken guy. So uh, he would He's just, he's also a really nice guy, so he'd be opening the door for people into the because their practice facilities on the second level. Well, it was in Oakland. I don't know where it is now since they moved over to the Bay, but <clears throat> there was other shit there. I think it's on the second floor of a hotel, mm-hmm. like a big ass hotel in downtown Oakland. So he would hold the door open for people, and then like more and more people, would, and he would just be there holding the door for like ten straight minutes. Oh god! My buddy like would be there doing site visits because he ran the security for him uh-huh. and he'd be like hey sir you gotta you gotta just like wave or something and one of my guys will come hold the door you can't you're a, you're the coach of the warriors you can't be holding the door for all these assholes <laughs> walking into a hotel he's like oh it's not a big deal like it kind of is it makes us look like dicks yeah steve but, kerr yeah he doesn't care no doesn't care uh what's your theory about swapping jerseys there were some people talking shit about it this morning um, about lebron being a, all buddy buddy with all the other players yeah i man I'm not cool with it. About him, about everybody being all friendly and shit now? Yeah. I don't really care. I, I like the olden days where you hated <clears throat> each other and that's it, man. You want to fucking hug, do it off the, after the season's over. Um, I want people to, to be cutthroat killers and, and that's kind of it. Like his whole happy go lucky bullshit. Yeah. It's, but, really it's become a me. lot like uh, politics now where, um, so people from, like the Buttigieg campaign versus the Warren campaign, they should be battling one another, mm-hmm. right? I guess he's out now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but that's not how it's ever been because I, I worked in politics almost ten years ago. What's really going on is everybody's kind of like one foot in, one foot out, waiting to see who wins so they can jump on board with that. Yeah, and I think the NBA has become like that too. Like LeBron's pretty set now, <clears throat> but earlier in his career, he was one of the first guys that was like meeting up with dudes in the summer, like, "Hey, we should all like." When's your contract up? When's your contract oh, yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Let's try to figure yeah. out a way to play together. Yeah. Which, not that there's anything wrong with that part of it, but it did kind of foster this real pussy ass, you know, approach to competitiveness. I don't, I don't think, I don't know where else you really see that. Honestly. You don't, and like, you know, you take a, a cutthroat killer like James Harden, right? Mm-hmm. It was nice to see him this week in a fucking beef with Giannis. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Although he's completely wrong. It was great to hear, though. It's it's funny to hear, but saying that Giannis' best talent is being tall, that's not true at all. Well, but by the way, that was his retort because Giannis was talking shit about him. Well, James Harden is a fucking joke in the NBA. Like, he's he's the guy that does, like, the same move in Mortal Kombat because it's difficult to defend. He just does it over and over and over again. I guess it's a strategy, but it's the watching James Harden play is the most boring. He's the most boring person in the NBA. I fucking hate watching him play because it's the same horse shit over and over and over again. 
If, if you're good at it, though, like I never got tired of Kareem Skyhook ever. I was just like, well, that's going in. I did. Uh, you did? Yeah. I didn't. Uh, and the fact that Harden's dropping 50 a game, like, mm. good luck. Um, for care. Giannis, that that's the seven mm. put all like the seven foot all he has to do is fucking dunk the basketball mm. is really hilarious to me, especially so last night's game, Giannis went hard and we played, I think it was twenty five minutes or something crazy. Um, he had forty points, 20, 20 rebounds. Like I mean, it was a monster, Five assists, yeah, monster fucking stat line. <clears throat> one of the plays though, he was at the three point line, took one dribble. Mm. Two steps, and then he dunked the basketball. Right. And I was like, that's, that's it? That's all you have to do from inside the three-point line? One, that's, that's all one Kevin dribble. Durant has to do. Huh? That's all Kevin Durant has to do. But Durant shoots threes all day long. <clears throat> I, he, doesn't, he doesn't do anything like that. He does, yeah. So, but who cares? I, I'm just saying, <clears throat> there is some validity to saying. Harden built his entire career on one move, being quick to his left. And yeah. he shoots free throws, and that's it. So the the idea that he's trying to talk about Giannis, like isolating Giannis' entire career down to one thing, is very ironic to me. And it's also pretty... Uh, that step un- back three of Harden's is nasty, dude. It is, yeah. But he travels on it every single time. It's one step? No. Yeah. It's three steps. Watch his feet, motherfucker. I will. Dribble, boom, 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 shoot. That's three steps. It's a fucking travel. He does it every single goddamn time. The only one I can say who travels all the time is LeBron <clears throat> with that fucking Euro step shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's hard to call in real time, though. Like, they've tried to figure it out. I get it. That one's hard to call because you, no, take, it is. you it, take a step, and it's not a pause. It's just, like, kind of a slight delay step, slight yeah. delay, then second step up. A man of that size, because, look, you know I hate LeBron. I always have. Um, <clears throat> he's been shooting the fuck out of the three ball lately. He's, yes. That, but he's that just one bo- he hit last night oh, yeah, from, yeah, like, yeah. 36 fucking feet, yeah. that was, like, he, he was – He's been feeling it lately. Look, he better win it for Kobe this year is all I'm saying. But uh, I don't think they're going to win. He was just blessed with the perfect NBA body. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know. Well, Zion's got that body, too. God forbid that motherfucker learned how to shoot the basketball. Jesus Christ, man. He's like he, he looks good. But that's man. what people said about LeBron when he was coming up. Like, God, if this dude learns how to shoot, we're yeah. all fucked. And that was right because he learned how to shoot and then everybody was fucked. They're saying he weighs in at over 300 pounds. Who is Zion? Uh-huh. He was 285. Yeah. They say, they say he hasn't gone on a scale in a while, but there are <clears> a, lot of, a lot of people are speculating over three bills and how long can he keep that up. We'll see. He's a young kid, man. I think trainer-wise, it takes a couple years, man, for you to get acclimated with the trainers and all that shit. Well, your, your body off doesn't. An injury. Yeah, he's going to be growing in some form or fashion for another, what, three years or so? Yeah. 23 is about yeah. when you stop, when HGH stops making your body mm-hmm. grow, so... He may get a little taller. He's not that tall. He's like six six, right? Mm, maybe six, six nine. seven. No, no, no. Yeah, he's not six nine. Yeah, L- no look way. up what he's listed at. I think he's at six nine, and he might be fucking three hundred pounds. Six six two eighty four is what he's listed at. Six six. Yeah, he's not that. He's like Draymond Green. He's the same height as Draymond God Green. God, he just it, plays man. like you can't. That's the fucking crazy thing about it. Like, he looks so much bigger on television, man. He he plays bigger. Like he that that fucking alley oop he did coming off the the reverse curl behind I think it was Javale McGee last yeah. night, like how the fuck did he jump higher than Javale McGee? Because McGee can jump and he's a set legit seven footer. That that pass so uh, like it was and, a perfect pass. Yeah, it was like it, was, it got right Lonzo onto Ball. his fingertips yeah. right there and he fucking jammed it down. Lonzo Ball and him have perfected that man. I'm I'm curious to see that duo grow. Well, the problem with that whole situation is that somebody's still got to be shooting three pointers. Yes, like, and you it's can't not win be Lonzo Ball. And, you can't now. <laughs> well, that's the ugliest shot since uh, Sean Marion, maybe. Although Sean Marion made 35 percent of his. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's it's an ugly shot. Somebody's got to shoot threes on that team. Long term, I mean, like they have uh, Redick there now, but he won't be there forever. No. No, he's he's getting older. I think he's got on a two year deal with those guys. And right Drew Holiday doesn't really. How much how much does he shoot from outside? Not enough. Um, they they need a, a true three guy out there besides Reddick. But um, uh, the one, one of their top guys, like Ball's good for a point guard. He 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 plays well as a point guard, but they need like a two guard that can shoot or a wing that can shoot or something. Otherwise, they're not going to win. The interesting part about it to me is all the talk with everyone is <clears> either. NBA still or NFL, especially with the combine just mm. happening. Baseball starts in fucking three weeks, and it has been – I haven't heard a goddamn word. Other than Astro shit, mm. I haven't heard a goddamn word about baseball, man. It's, it's strange. Um, even today, it's like the – I always <coughs> when I wake up, I look at like the top story of the day, you know, 
Um, people were there was a lot of chatter about who would win rookie of the of the year, Zion or Ja Morant. I don't think that's even close in my opinion. No, but, Zion can't win. He didn't play enough games. No, dude, it's got to be Ja Morant. Yeah. And uh, Ja Morant's a fucking animal, dude. <laughs> He's not afraid to jump. I told you. Who that. would you take if you would it, knowing who they are now? <clears throat> who would you take? Like if I had an empty roster, yeah. or if I was just drafting. first first pick in the draft, and it was John Moran or, or Zion all over again. Like I would take year. Moran because he's got a, like his shelf life is going to be longer Same. just because of the weight mm-hmm. issue. But we'll see what happens. Like that's just an educated guess. We don't know yet what how that's going to play out. We don't. But like, looking at may, it this he may year, get in, like Draymond Green had that same issue. He was a bit chubby his first couple of years. Then he lost weight, got into the starting lineup, and he's been for better or worse an All Star ever since. So. Uh, he's made an all NBA team first through third every year since 2014, I think, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. So who knows? Guys could turn that weight thing around, but some people never do. Like Big Country, for example, never did. No. And he was out yeah. of the league. Uh, I, sorry to Phillies fans out there. Ryan Howard did get injured, but the weight didn't help. Like no. He never was able to come back because of his weight. In my Prince opinion. Fielder, same way. Same, yeah. yeah. With his neck issue, right? Mm-hmm. And he was just never able to come back. So I think uh, – might to happen me, to Vlad Jr. too, by the way. Maybe we'll see. He's still he's nineteen too. Well, yeah. he's going to be t- he's twenty now, but uh, I don't I don't know how that's going to play out. But we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, as always, we are brought to you by mybookie.com. <laughs> Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. I know I've not been betting betting a lot. Um, I bet that's uh, again. I've got the coronavirus. Um, I bet that Fury fight. Obviously, I bet the shit out of that. But uh, right now, obviously, we're not betting fucking spring ball for baseball um we'll be betting hoops though next week starting uh in these conference tournaments and things like that and then obviously march madness um so get your money in double your deposit at mybookie.com promo code drinking bros double it up because we're going hard in hoops and also if you are not signed up for drinking bros sports on facebook uh join the group it's free only one rule don't be a cunt or you might end up on this trophy that is next to me um, why is that a big deal? Uh, we give away free shit in there all the time. Uh, this year for the brackets, which is free. It's not affiliated with any anybody else but us. Uh, all you have to do is sign up. It's free. Um, we are giving away a signed Dennis Rodman jersey to anybody who correctly picks uh, the best bracket in March Madness this year. Last year was a signed Christian Leitner jersey. And it doesn't matter who you are and if you've never played before because the guy who won last year never played. The only person that's ever in the history of brackets made a perfect bracket was some lady who didn't even know what college basketball was. Yes. She just randomly... She picked it on mascots. Yeah. She was on ESPN. I remember her, man. Um, she won the million dollars. Nobody's ever won it since. Yeah, the more you know about college basketball, the less likely you are to win, I think. <laughs> Honestly, I think. Like, it's one, like, if you bet each individual game or each individual round as the rounds went on, you would probably have a higher chance, but that's not how it works. Yeah, You're but bracket. it's going to be fun, man. I, I can't wait. It's coming up, so uh, go to mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Double your deposit and get ready. Um, speaking of, of why we never fucking chat about baseball and, and how it's it's been just kind of fucking enveloped by this, uh, or engulfed, I should say, in this goddamn Astro scandal, things that I have seen pop up every single day are NFL-related. We had the Combine this weekend, mm-hmm. and... Uh, that's become a thing now where people are really starting to watch to see what happens yeah. um, with their favorite college players and things like that. Uh, anything impress you this weekend? Um, a punter putting up 225. <laughs> that was mine. 25 times. <laughs> Although uh, watching Akuda, his footwork yesterday, yeah. or uh, on Saturday rather, yep. like so he did the uh, you run, reverse, or you run and then uh, sp- spin run again and then catch a ball and i've never seen feet move that fast before he's the best cornerback he would look he would, and this is not a homer <laughs> comment because he was at ohio state he, that's the best cornerback i've seen in like the last 15 years it's his size yeah he's six one, two hundred, and i want to say five pounds somewhere in there i mean he ran ran the 40 and what was he a four or five something like that yeah he's a freakish athlete and you know look he's been on ohio state for uh, the last three seasons, nobody even throws the ball to him, like at all. They never, they will never challenge him. When they do, he picks it off. <laughs> That's the best corner I've seen come out. Yeah, I don't understand why no team has ever tried to get two of those guys. 
You know what I mean? I, I think, and here, here's here's my guess on that because I was thinking about that, that same thing today. I think it's because their salaries have skyrocketed. Who gives a shit? Um, well, look, you look at the Cowboys. They're going through it right now. Um, they're trying to pay Dak Prescott, pay Amari Cooper, mm-hmm. um, and then pay a corner. Uh, this corner that they have is looking at $17 million right now um, a year for a corner. That is really hard, man, when you have to pay a quarterback and a fucking wide receiver. It's like, God damn. I know, look, I know the Detroit Lions are going through with Darius Slay. They're, mm-hmm. they're trying to trade uh, Darius Slay right now. Actually, ironically, to the Broncos, they're trying to make that deal happen with a trade partner right now simply because – these fucking cornerback salaries have gotten so high, man. Um, I think if you draft them at the same time, mm. yeah, you're going to get them for a few years. Jalen Ramsey just went through it. He got traded right before the end because they didn't want to back up the truck for him um, in Jacksonville. So it's tough, man. I think, But I think if you can get one in the top five like Akuda is going to go, get them now and then, you know, well, yeah, I mean, max out that rookie contract as long as you can. It's probably going to be the. I mean, uh, the Lions are in that spot. It provided Joe Burrow goes first and Chase Young goes second. The Lions have the third pick. They, I mean, the only other uh, person they might take is Isaiah Simmons, but I don't think they will. So the chatter this weekend was, but that the Redskins he's might the, draft Tua. Did you hear this? No, God, what the fuck? Yeah. I couldn't believe it, man. That's Dan, been, it was, Dan it was Snyder all over the TV. He's got to calm down with this horse shit. He's it's gotta, crazy. He's got to stop. Uh, yeah, that is crazy. That'd be really dumb. Um, I could see the Lions taking. I, I think uh, Akuda and Isaiah Simmons are kind of like onesie twosie, and that as far as uh, everybody other than Chase Young defensively. Did you see that guy run, Isaiah Simmons? Yeah. The Clemson linebacker. Yeah. I mean, he's a linebacker, but he played defensive end this year. He played linebacker. He played cornerback. He's he played, incredible. And he played safety. He played all four of those positions this year. Which he is, was the guy I was worried most about in that Ohio State Clemson yeah. game when I was just and like, he's, That's the be- he's, he's the best linebacker. He's 250 in the game. pounds. Yeah. And he. A fucking animal. What was his fucking uh, 40 time? Hang on. Oh, it was lightning. I think it was 4 5, dude. Let's see. 4 5 9, maybe? Four four nine. No, wait, that's not him. Uh, hold on. I want to say he was four five nine. I mean, it was insane to watch that guy. Four three nine. For Isaiah Simmons, six four two hundred and forty pounds. Four three nine forty. Holy shit! Can you imagine getting hit by that guy in the no. open field? I would just, I would just kill myself. I think like if I saw him coming, I'd pull my gun because I carry a gun when I play football. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Ty Cobb did with back baseball in the back baseball, in the day. Yeah. Uh, if I see that guy coming at me, I'm just like, nope. <laughs> I'm not gonna die like this. I'm gonna kill myself. Uh, Man, he, he also ran a four three nine and a thirty nine inch vertical. vertical? Leap. Jesus Christ, uh, he is a fucking monster. Monster, and, monster. And, Look, this is the best draft in years. <laughs> I not I, not the uh, the combine like the those stats don't mean shit when it comes to actually playing the game of football. But we all we've seen him play for three. Seen years. him play. He's, so to, to to see these stats. Makes I, him even I could see any one of those guys. I mean, look, you're not going to be as big of an impact player as Chase Young, probably, just because if, let's say you're a linebacker, outside linebacker, which is where you can probably make the most impact, like a guy like Clay Matthews mm-hmm. for a long time when he was really doing it well, um, you still can't make as big of an impact as Chase Young can because on every single play he has the opportunity to fuck up the quarterback's game plan. No. Every single play. Like no. Every single play. If you're playing right outside linebacker and they keep throwing the ball – to the to the right side of the offensive right side of the field, all you can do is tackle few people from behind. Chase, you Chase Young's a fucking generational talent, man. Yeah. I, I, well, if, I think if the Isaiah Redskins, Simmons might be too. Though. I, so do I. 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 So do I. He's great. Um, <clears throat> I, fuck, man. If, if I just the can't Redskins, believe I can't believe anybody is talking about drafting Tua. I can't either. Like anybody, I think. I hope that he doesn't get drafted in the first round for for the NFL's sake. It's setting a bad precedent. Somebody in Drinking Bro Sports, I can't remember who it was, but they said, I don't think he's going to be a, a bust. Traditionally, he's going to have one or two really good years and then get fucking lit up, and that'll be the end of his career. The problem is he's had four, four lower leg injuries in already. And a half. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well, dude. I'll, over that now. By the time the season starts, it'll be, have been two years, but yeah. I, I'm not – just get this guy out of my fucking face. And, and if you're the Redskins and you pass on Chase Young, it's crazy. I Fuck, man. Uh, Isaiah, look, you have Joe Burrow, Chase Young, 
Isaiah Simmons, Jeffrey Okuda. Like, there is way better players than fucking goddamn Tua up there. It, it would shock and alter my mind um, <laughs> if that happened. And, like, dude, if you're a Redskins fan and that happens, fucking burn your jerseys tomorrow. Well, the Knicks are losing their mind. Like, all the Knicks fans are fucking losing it right now. Because well, well, every year. They, they're the Redskins of the, of the NBA. But there's, like, a serious movement to get – the ownership change Dolan yeah like they I don't know how you do Jimmy I mean Dolan. All, the only way to do it so far as I know is that all the other owners have to vote to get that guy out of there it won't not in the east because no. <laughs> that's a fucking couple of free wins a year yeah uh the NBA is pissed off about it because that's the that's the most it's, valuable franchise it's one of them yeah, yeah. like what them the and fuck? the Lakers well it's going to be the Clippers soon man you want to do you want to tell the audience what you told me before we came on air I I have not heard this and I was shocked when you said this to me um, I, let's see how specific I can be. Um, so it's today or this weekend we found out that uh, Balmer is trying to buy the forum. It looks like he's like the LA forum, the old yeah, LA yeah, yeah. forum, yeah. which is in Inglewood, which is close to the airport. It's like it's right there. It's yep. not like getting to Staples Center and it's damn sure not like trying to get to fucking Anaheim or any of that stupid bullshit. It's right on the fucking yeah. 405 yeah. right there. It's right on the 405. And it looks like they're going to close on that here in the next couple of weeks and then demo and build a complex north of $2 billion. Oof. Oof. Which is like a sports mecca style complex. So we've all, I don't know, well, maybe we all haven't, but if you've been to the Staples Center, it's like an outdoor shopping mall basically. Yeah. With a fucking basketball arena and then some other shops and stuff across the street. It's, yeah. It's dope. I like Staples Center. It's fine. As far as arenas go, <sighs> if you're in from out of town, it's pretty nice. If you're a local, it's kind of a pain in the ass to like. If yeah, you, if you but, drive. but I'm talking about the arena itself. It's oh just, yeah, it's it, old. It's just okay. Yeah, I, they built it in uh, ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, um, but I, I mean, it's a, fran- the way they, a, a the way four billion dollar it. franchise needs to get their arena updated more frequently than every twenty years, in my opinion. Yeah, like they I, they need a full overhaul of that arena. The ones point. who did it right, because you and I have been to almost every stadium in America, mm-hmm. I feel like. The the ones who did it right are uh, obviously Jerry World. Love going there. Uh, that stadium in Atlanta, the uh, Mercedes-Benz Dome, yeah. the Falcons. Um, that thing's fucking choice. I mean, the, and sa- then the Saints are... The Saints upgraded theirs, it's, yes, and it's it's nice. But um, the my, I would not, say but... my, my third favorite, dude, is probably T-Mobile in Vegas, man. The way that it's built, and there's not a bad seat in that. Yeah, place. I mean it's it's a nice place. Like I've watched um, a lot of I've watched rodeo shit there. I've watched hockey shit there. I've watched a music concert, and I've seen a fight, yeah. a UFC fight twice. Yep. Like yeah, yeah. Tw- I've seen McGregor fight twice. There. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no bad seats, and it's loud as shit in there too. Loud as shit, and the way everything's set up, uh, I enjoy it. Um, the Falcons is uh, they just took Jerry World and. Expanded it with the the fucking wraparound TV and all that other shit. Like, yeah. and the way that it opens, like a nest, is mm. awesome. And it opens in five minutes. Like that place is rad. Um, the you and I have driven by the uh, the new one for the Raiders. That looks like that could exceed everything else. And then the one in LA, I saw the mock-ups for it. Um, not the the new Clippers stadium, but uh, the Raiders and I'm sorry, the Rams and the uh, mm. Chargers stadium. That thing looks incredible. And that one opens uh, what next year, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because yeah. they've been they were playing at the Rose Bowl or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They? yeah. Um, so, by the way, fun fact: if an atom were the size of a ro- the Rose Bowl, the nucleus of the atom would be about the size of a golf ball sitting on the fifty yard line. That's how much open space there is in all this, like even in your body and shit. Yeah, it's pretty neat, right? Isn't that neat? Learn something new every day. You do. You're going to learn something new right now today. <laughs> Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Zip. Four hours left by the time this episode drops. Or if you're watching the video show live on YouTube, um, y- you got fucking 10 hours to get 25% off everything in the store at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. As always, the 36 month pay as you go program, no interest applies with this. Um, I'm going to have to buy a new one. Because I, I got the coronavirus and I have to burn my own mattress and sheets and pillows and all that stuff. Um, I'm sorry. That's going to happen and I'm going to use this 25% off. 
use the fucking my own URL. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, next up, we got boxofawesome.com. D'Anthony? Yep. It is a box of awesome. They get the dopest shit on the planet in there, man. They've got a lot of cool shit, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like Christmas for dudes once a month. 45 bucks. You get a box that's valued at probably 100 mm-hmm. 120 something like that, man. You know, I've got an adopt kit. I've gotten travel bags. I got a fucking hatchet, a whiskey decanter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Je- dude, Jesse got a. So we started it for because it, it got a girls one too. Jesse got a fucking that steel. What's that pan, man? It's real heavy. Cast iron. Yeah, cast iron skillet. Yeah. Um, well, I, I know that uh, every box is forty five bucks basically. Yeah. And you get a minimum of like seventy five dollars in value out of it, mm-hmm. and it's because look, it's not a they're not, it's it's not magic. They're not doing fucking. It's they buy shit in bulk that's dope as fuck. Yep, and they sell it straight to you. So they cut out middlemen and all that stuff. That's why they can sell it to you at a more affordable price uh-huh. than you would pay for it elsewhere. And it's dope too because it's like kit. It's like a kit of stuff. So it's like for three to five items that all go like you can use them all together yeah and i like shopping like that i don't like going to i don't want to go to the mall and buy like a shirt here and it's like give me outfits you understand oh yeah because i'm stupid i don't know how to dress myself look at this stupid actually this this hoodie is dope i want to give yeah um, what do you who who did this this trump this this is from kirill that's Uh, awesome as listeners of the show know i don't give two fucks about trump but this one says it's it says uh Trump 2040 till death do us part. Yeah. He'll be <laughs> there forever. I've gotten a lot of f- weird looks from people wearing this because they assume, I mean, look at, look at my face. Yeah. They th- assume that I'm like a diehard Trump guy because I'm really pasty. The should beard, be Dan. The whole thing. No, yeah, I, should I be for America. I don't care about any of this. Uh, but I just think it's funny. Yeah. Because there's so much liberal fear that. There, there have been major people in the Democratic Party that said, if he loses, he won't leave. Like, what, what does that mean, he won't leave? The Secret Service will fucking kick his ass out, dude. No, what they're saying is uh, Don Jr. is going to go in in 2024, and then Ivanka, and then the rest of the family is going to no, no, take no. over. No, no, no. People from the major people from the Democratic Party have said that they don't think he will leave the White House, even if he doesn't get reelected. That'd be great. I hope he doesn't. I hope he dies in it. I love him. I love him. I don't know if you could say that. The Secret Service is going to show up and talk to you now. Why? You hope the president dies in the White House? Oh, no. I just hope he lives forever. And then, you know, eventually when it's his time to go, he goes. I like... Uh, I enjoy his whole shit. I'm entertained every single day. What, do you think that whole family is robots? What do you think chances are? Because they're rich. How do you know they're not all just sitting at home and those are robot avatars? Could be. Cruising around. Could be. I tell you what, Ivanka's so hot it would not surprise me. No. You ever I'm, seen her in real life? Yeah. Whew. I feel like if she's an avatar, though, that they should mass produce those. She's a goddamn smoke show. Um, just like have them in shrink wrap on a shelf. You can, whoosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just add water and it goes the full size. Yeah, man. Is that- uh, you want to impress somebody like Ivanka? Go to boxofawesome dot com. Yeah. Promo code Drinking Bros twenty percent <laughs> off there. Um, since you're talking about politics, um, this was some bets on my bookie uh, that I've currently won, and I am amped about this. Um, there is political bets on my dot com as well. Again, promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. One of them was who was going to get the Democratic nominee. We just got breaking news. Klobuchar is out. Yep. So now it's uh, Biden, Sanders, Pete Buttigieg is out. Yep. Uh, Tom Steyer is also out. Well, he was, <laughs> I don't know if you saw him, but he was uh, dancing to, I think it was Back That Ass Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, If yeah. I'm not mistaken, yep. before yep. the South Carolina primary, him yeah. and his wife on stage. Uh-huh. And uh, God damn, dude. So it's, I, it's a problem with fundamentalists that they don't have a, a sense of irony. They don't understand that what they're doing is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they believe so strongly, I deserve black people's votes because black people vote Democrat. That's just how it is. So all I've got to do is go act black a little bit. That is so offensive. <laughs> like that is honestly so offensive. Can you imagine uh, any, like any Republican doing that? Like showing up to a fucking, I don't know, like any kind of uh, black community meeting or something like that and just using like a really a really caricature version of a black accent or something like that to talk like Leonard calling themselves Leonard Washington or whatever yeah. Dave Chappelle's character was from, yeah, yeah, from yeah. that from, uh, but somehow it's okay to fucking put on hip hop music and dance on stage. Like, man, what's crazy. The fuck? It's crazy. Um, but I want to say this cause I, I voted, I bet on this a long time ago. 
Um, I still, I'm still in the mix, and I didn't think I was gonna be. I put a hundred on Biden a long time ago. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he's gold crazy Joe is still hanging around, dude. And uh, Super Tuesday is coming up tonight uh, as we speak, um, so it's gonna be fun to watch tonight. But uh, crazy Joe's hanging around. So is my hundo, dude. I'm pretty proud of that. And I will say, because you can bet on Trump winning already. That's already the odds are already up. Um, it was three to one, and I had bet on that a long time ago. I put a hundred on that as well. I think it was the max bet on on those but uh those are fun man so even if you're looking to bet political shit go ahead um uh, i want to talk about tony romo do you know what's really interesting before you move on sure uh the person with the best odds to be the democratic vice president nominee is stacy abrams do you know who that is yes from georgia why oof black she woman from the, the south yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. know she ticks the boxes i don't Oprah know. endorsed her yeah i mean maybe because booker is a uh, northeast elite like biden is you know what i mean like he's from new jersey so maybe that's the thinking because you got to go with yeah. some kind of minority even if it's a buddha judge is a gay man sure you can't go with all old whites. i can tell you the democrats going black i can promise you that i can promise you that. i mean nina turner is is the second most likely and then uh elizabeth warren and and kamala harris are uh well tied for you know elizabeth warren because uh, bernie's got to pick her up that's his only Oh, yeah, but he's like, point. yeah, they, they will, uh, after super, that's, that's my prediction after tonight. Well, I guess, yeah, yeah after tonight, um, sometime this week, Warren will drop out and announce that she's running with Bernie probably, man, um, I, that's the way they should do it. Cause they're trying to fuck over Bernie right and now. And if he does that, then Biden's got to pick one too. And he'll, we'll see where I he agree. goes. We'll see where he goes. I think because of how handily he won in South Carolina, it's probably got to be a black person. Yes. Uh, Cory Booker is, is, is where my money is at. But, yeah, maybe. Uh, Stacey Abrams, you're, look, you're not far off. Um, the only thing is she just didn't, she hasn't done anything in Georgia. I'm from Georgia. Could be Michelle Obama. <sighs> that would be a very smart move by Biden to do that because he gets the full weight of the Obamas behind his entire, the rest of his campaign. I don't know if she wants to be VP. I mean, she could run. I, here's the thing. She's not going to, she can't run for president without ever having done anything else. She's not Trump. She's not a billionaire. Here's my thinking. To be honest with you, and I know this is off sports, but uh, I think if if uh, if it comes down to Bernie winning, I think the only card the Democrats have left is to say Michelle Obama. Well, it can't be president. Hil- it can't be Hillary for president. No, it can't be Hillary. That's what I'm saying. I think I think Michelle Obama is the only one left. I think the smart move would be for Biden to take Michelle Obama as his veep. I don't think she'll do veep though. I think she'll that'd be, be a mistake on that'd be a mistake on to. her part. Oh, I get it. I, I, she I should do it because he's not going to run for a second term. He's He'll be too old. By That's then. what I think. I don't know if she wants to do it, though. Maybe she, she was on a hot <clears> mic <throat> talking to that uh, Prime Minister of France's wife saying, yep. this fucking sucks. This shop sucks. Right now. I understand it. By the way, for uh, for the election, it's uh, Donald Trump minus 300 and the field plus 200. Yeah. So Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way Trump. Uh, uh, Tony Romo. $17, 17 million dollar deal with CBS. What's your thoughts on that? I think it's more than what I thought it would be, but I'm not surprised by that at all. You know what's weird, man, is I had heard 10 uh, for, for Monday Night Football, mm-hmm. and this was six, eight months ago. Look at how fast that has turned, dude, mm-hmm. to 17. Um, and, and here's what it was. was uh, ESPN drove up that price, and CBS had the right to match in his contract. Mm-hmm. So that means ESPN offered him 17. Man, that is a lot of money. That is the most he made as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Currently, he would be the 13th <laughs> highest paid quarterback in the NFL for that salary. And instead, he's calling their games. Every player has a right to bitch about Tony Romo's making as an announcer if they're not getting that now. I don't think so. Because he's better at announcing that they, than they are at playing. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's one of the most insightful... <laughs> Like wh- who's out there? Is he better than Dak Prescott? Yes, <laughs> I think I honestly think Tony Romo could go play for the Cowboys now and still be better than Dak Prescott. I did too. I just I don't did too. Like, actually, Prescott is <laughs> Prescott's. It, it's like a fucking nightmare with people like that. They're just good enough <laughs> to, to stay in the starting lineup, but not good enough to ever win yeah. the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It's true. It's, it's chaos for a team. It's like Michigan with fucking uh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh, man, you're stuck. He's like. He, I mean, they still go fucking like 
10 and 4 or whatever. Oof. So how do you get rid of him? Well, it's because he hasn't won the game in eight years, bitch. We talked to, uh, or I did at that Oklahoma LSU game, a bunch of NFL GMs who said the same thing. And we're like, look, man, even if you, if you just have a, a somewhat good NFL quarterback, mm-hmm. you're stuck with them and you have to ride it out because there is, to try to find one. Yeah, like Jay Cutler, for example. Yeah. Perfect for example. fucking years, and now his replacement. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. Perfect example. They all suck. They all suck. Um, um, there's nothing you can do. Mm. Nothing you can do. Jay Cutler, though, is living his life right. You know he's got a reality show on E! with his wife, his hot-ass wife. Yeah, he's never. Kristen Cavallari. He's like. Uh, he's funny, though, man. I, I bet he's. Like, I bet the two of you guys would be besties in real life. He's, he's got to be real dry. The, he's got to be the happiest dude on earth. Yes, he is. Because he literally got away with murder. He's like Ray Lewis walking around, except for instead of actually killing somebody, he just like stole murder a bunch franchise. of money from the Bears. <laughs> he was like Madoff, except for oh. from the Bears. He was just yeah. stealing money from them. He has the best life ever. He's married to the hottest wife. They moved to Nashville. Well, Madoff is going to die in jail now. They've got like, a reality show. Yeah, fuck him, he should. Yeah. Speaking of dying, James Lipton died. I know. We talked about it on Ross Passion Revolution today. I was... Uh, look, I've I've never missed one of those episodes of uh, Inside the Actor Studio. Um, by the way, uh, the Colts are looking at uh, Philip Rivers. I could see that. Yeah, that's a good pickup for them. I could too. Um, I mean, it'd be better if they got uh, uh, Tom Brady, but that's not going to happen. He's not going to Indianapolis. Indianapolis has the pieces, man. They just need a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he could win there. I'm just saying he's not moving his family to Indianapolis. No, no. Uh, Although I, I enjoy that city. I don't, I don't want to shit on the people from Indy. No, it's dope. But he's just not. that's not part of his life plan, I no, don't think. No, not at all. Um, it is. But it's become clear this week that he's not going back to the Patriots. That's that's like, unless this is some kind of rope-a-dope by the Patriots. Yep. It seems pretty likely, or it seems extremely unlikely that he's going back there. Even though he's been seen in public with Edelman and shit lately, from everybody who's part of the negotiation, everyone's saying like, "Yeah, he's not going back." Titans have, are, are rumored to be the favorite now because mm-hmm. of uh, Vrabel. And look, you can hand off the ball eight hundred times to Derrick Henry, so you can save your arm. Yeah, I mean, who do they have catching passes there though? That's that's the thing. They got to get some receivers down there. Um, they got a couple decent ones. Uh, breaking news right now, and this is going to warm your heart as much as it does mine, Dan. Um, your cold, dead heart. Uh, Chipper Jones for the Braves has joined uh, ESPN as a baseball analyst. I love him, man. I know we talked about this last year. He was in the booth for uh, a couple games. Mm-hmm. He's fantastic, dude. And the slang that he has when he talks about baseball, mm-hmm. <coughs> words that I've never heard before. Like what? Um, he was talking about last year in the booth where, where I, I guess every spring he goes down and, and he helps um, – uh, the hitting instructor mm-hmm. with the Braves, and he helps out all the players. Jeff, what is um, his name? What's his name? I, I forget. But um, he, so he goes down there every spring, uh, and he works with everybody. And last Greg year, he Walker. said um, he was working with uh, McCann, mm-hmm. and he was working with uh, <clears throat> that other kid who's going to play third base. Um, oh, Austin Riley. Yeah. Um, anyways, so with McCann, like he was talking about, he was like, "Hey, man, are you?" He had some phrase for home run that I'd never, ever heard before. And I was like, dude, I'm a baseball fucking junkie, and I've never heard that before. Hmm. Um, and he goes, or do you want to hit singles? You know? And uh, the, the, the rest of the telecast, everybody on social media, it was the same way that Romo was when Romo first came in, where they were like, Jesus Christ, can Chipper Jones just sit in the booth all day and just talk shit? Because it's Yickety. It's great. Yeah. Yickety and something else. Mammo man. means a big bomb. Roadrunner is fast. I don't know. <laughs> Yickety yak. That's what he calls a fucking home run. Either way, man. <laughs> it was the same reaction on social media that Tony Romo got where it was just like knowledgeable as far as hitting goes. Chipper Jones is the dude. I, 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 people forget how great of a hitter he was. Um, I don't know how you could forget. He's the best. He's the he's tied for the best switch hitter ever with Mickey Mantle. I mean, you can't. I yes, I agree. Although, although if Mickey Mantle had been healthy his whole career, it wouldn't be close because he would have had seven hundred home runs probably. But the uh, problem was on the Braves all those years, <laughs> he was behind the the greatest pitching staff maybe ever assembled, and like they got a little more shine than Chipper did. Well, it's not just that they didn't really build an offense around him. I mean, the best offensive players he ever had around him was probably when he was very very young, like Fred McGriff and those guys. Like when they and Ron Gant, well, although Ron Gant left, no, I don't think he ever played a full season with Gant, did he? 
because he was hurt that 93 season. Yeah, he had a motorcycle season. accident. Yeah. Well, he was hurt that 93 season, and then Gant got hurt in between those seasons, mm-hmm. I think, and then went to the Reds. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, they never had any great offenses until <clears> – I guess they did later on when he was a little older, Marcus Giles and all those guys. Yep. And uh, God, who else were, who, who else was on that team? Like the 2002 Braves, because that, that's one of the only times they really ever had any great offenses. He just didn't have a whole lot of people around him. No, and he look, he finished at 303, 468 home runs, 1623 RBIs. Yeah, in this team career: Andrew Jones, Raphael for call, uh, Chipper, Gary Sheffield. That year, that that those early late nineties, early two thousand year, Javi Lopez was still there. They had some pretty good bats, but for the most part, and they had Vinny Castillo that year too. Mm-hmm. For the most part, and no he one. he was all. I mean, look, any team he was on, he was the offensive star of it. But like the Braves have not; they're not; they've never been known for offense until I guess now. Yeah, yeah. Like anyway, now, so, now I think their offense is better than their defense. Probably listening to him in the booth is is a fucking treat. <clears throat> you mark my words; this is going to be like a Romo type sitch. <laughs> um, he's great, uh, so yeah. I'm I'm super super amped about this. And I had no idea it was that fucking funny. Like all I'd heard is the stories of him knocking up Hooters waitresses. Right. Well, Which, there was there was that one, now that he's back on the road. Yeah. Hey. That well, he's got a new wife from that first one, but like the first wife he was with, he got caught because. It was like, God, what the fuck was happening? It was some kind of banquet or something that was televised, and somebody got video of them walking out of the room together, but it wasn't even part of the video. It just was in the background, and yeah, somebody yeah, saw it. Yeah, And like, then he knocked up the Hooters waitress in Detroit, I think yeah. it was. Um, if you're a famous person, probably, I mean, if this goes for anybody, don't cheat on your partner, but probably definitely don't if there's cameras around everywhere. Yeah, or at a Hooters with a Hooters waitress. Eh. Um, they're going to come back and get you. So... Uh, I'm amped about that. Or you could just cheat with terminally ill people. Yeah. Because they're going to go away. Yeah, but that's, you know, you don't want to bang somebody who's 83. No, I mean, like, nice, hot 22-year-old with cancer. Oh, God. <laughs> just going to leave that that line where it uh, needs to stay right there. That's Dan Holloway on um, Instagram. That is at Dan Holloway. Did you see uh, Mike Send Trout? Send all your comments and hatred stories that way. Did you see Mike way. Trout hit that golf ball? Smoke that thing for at top top golf. Yeah, I want to see how far he can hit a real golf ball. Because that shot was probably about the, it, their their back. What's fence, your guesstimate on that drive? I don't know their back their back fence. I think is two fifty, mm-hmm. but they they designed those balls to not be able to leave that fence, and this one left that fence dead center. Yeah. Uh, so it's got to be like I don't know three twenty five with that ball. So with a real ball and a real driver, he's got to. I mean, I think he was hit with a three wood or some shit. With a real driver and a real, like, modern PGA Tour ball, he should be able to hit the ball 400-plus yards pretty much easily. But he's got the tightest, most compact swing I've ever seen. Yeah, he fucking ripped that ball. Um, there was a thing on ESPN about who who hit the ball better, him or Bellinger, because Bellinger hit one uh-huh. as well not too long ago. Bellinger's got the big loopy swing. There's no way he could outdrive Trout. No. Ever. Sorry, homeboy. No, he crushed it. He crushed it. Um, by the way, since I am sick and I have the coronavirus, uh, we don't know that I'm going to live or not. Um, this keeps creeping up, and I don't know what's going to happen with it. So this year's 2020 Olympics are in Japan. If they don't get this shit fucking under control mm. here, <clears throat> they might cancel the games. Like That's well, a real also, thing. They're talking about uh, suspending part of the Japanese baseball season as well, the first part, until they get the shit under control. Man, I mean, I, really, what we need to do? This is what we need to do. You ever seen the movie Logan's Run? Yes. So Michael Very York, long time ago, Michael York, who you remember as like the Q character from Austin Powers, mm-hmm. but that's not what he was called there. But right, uh, he was the assistant or whatever the fuck you want to call him, uh, Michael York. So the the premise of the movie is once you turn a certain, you're born with a gem in your hand and it's a diamond, it's white, and then when you turn a certain age, it turns red and. and Fucking people come after you and murder your ass, yeah. right? Because they don't want any old people in their society. Um, it's kind of what we're at. Here's the deal. You folks, think it goes on? Stop worrying about coronavirus unless you're old as shit. Because if you're under like 60, the survivability rate is 99.02 or 0.98%. That means two one hundredths of a chance 
percentage wise that you would die from coronavirus. It's like the flu. You don't die for, if you're if you're a healthy person. You don't die from the flu. It just sucks. I I understand it, but everybody needs to calm the fuck down. The Surgeon General put out a, a statement on Twitter this weekend saying, "Please stop buying all the face masks. It's not that's not even how the goddamn virus is transmitted, you idiots." Yeah, I, look, like you're ruining hospitals right now. They can't get their hands on enough <laughs> face masks. Just wash your hands. And it's also really stupid that it took a pandemic to remind you that you need to wash your hands, folks. This is not. Like, just wash your goddamn hands, please, and stop touching stuff. And if you're over 70, just, you know, stay out of public. Stay so, home. I'm look, I, I'm looking at this now. This, this is in August. <clears throat> I mean, we're, we're in March right now. Mm-hmm. You have five months. I don't know if this goes down. And, and can, you probably can't. Like, the Olympics <laughs> is so massive. Yeah, I don't know if, if you, you haven't been it, yeah. to it. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can move it. Wouldn't that be wild? That would be the most 2020 thing of 2020, that the coronavirus cancels the Olympics. Well, it's been a pretty rough year so far, honestly. Like, yeah. January was World War III. <laughs> yeah. That never Supposedly. happened. Supposedly, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then February is the coronavirus, and that's... <laughs> Trump was saying that... Pe- people were trying to talk shit to him because... Uh, or about him. He's like, especially CNN, they're like, oh, he said the coronavirus is a hoax. Like, no, he didn't. God damn, dude. Yeah. Like, obviously, he understands that coronavirus is a real virus. Yeah, but people are blown out of proportion. Yes. Um, anyways, who cares? Yeah. So we'll see. Um, my money, <laughs> if I had to bet on it, and I wish, I wish my bookie had a prop bet on it. Yeah, that might be a little too much for them. I would say, do they do fucked up shit all the time on there? Let's see if they have something about the coronavirus. How, I like, think. Body count. <laughs> no, I, I think <clears throat> I would lean towards they'll cancel the games. I really would. Let's see. They do have weird. They got a bunch of weird prop bets on there, special, man. I think they'll. I think they'll end up canceling the game. Special, I really do. Special wagers. What the fuck? Mar- Mary Carey versus Tammy Pippi Longstocking Aaron celebrity boxing match. Yes, 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 yes. What is Porn this? Stars. Mary I know Carey. Mary Carey is the woman who ran for governor yeah. of California. She got some votes too back in the day against yeah, Schwarzenegger there. and everybody. Was, was that 2004? I think. Mm-hmm. And I, the other woman, Tammy Aaron, that's a porn star as well. Uh, I would imagine. I would imagine. Oof! First organization to send humans to Mars. SpaceX is in the lead on that one. Really? Yep. Okay. Um, is this all in my bookie? Coronavirus linked deaths in the U.S. by January 1st, 2021. Told you, dude. Over is 100. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm taking the over. Yeah, because what's, what's the old what's people. the fucking, yeah. What's it's the plus thing? 300 and under is minus 800. So. I'm fucking betting that right now. Yeah, that's. You I'll, can bet on the coronavirus? I told you, dude. My bookie rules. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. The over is low. For There's, a, there's eight or uh, 10 more months left and only 100 people. There's already been five. And it's like old people are going to die from yeah, this. Yeah, dude. Like old, how, d- don't, don't like 2,000 people a year, old US people. U.S. total now six. So we only need six. 94 more people. Don't, don't like, t- I think it's 2,000 people a year die from influenza yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or some shit like that. It's 4,000. It may, it may be. So like this is 100? Yeah, there will definitely be 100. Guys, bet on human tragedy. Yes. Always. Go to mybookie.com, <laughs> promo code Drinking Bros. double your deposit, and bet on that. I'm betting on that. You could Fuck bet yeah. a fuckload of money. is the over under. It's plus 300, too, so you could bet a fuckload of money on that. If you're young and healthy, contract coronavirus and to start going to nursing homes. Or if it gets to 99. <laughs> <Kill it>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You've got to kill two people to get your bet. God, well, what does it go through? January 2021? Yeah. Will coronavirus kill more people than the Black Plague? What's the Black Plague? How many, how many died in that? Hold on, let me look. Now we're getting somewhere, Dan. I fucking knew it. I knew me having it today would get us somewhere. Um, oh, this is stupid. Estimated 75 to 200 million. There's no way. But the no. yes is plus 3,000, so there's no way. No is minus ten. You have to bet ten thousand dollars to make one dollar. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <clears throat> Trump declare a national emergency due to coronavirus. Nope. There's no way he'll do that. No is minus two hundred. Yes is plus one fifty. Will the twenty twenty Olympics be canceled? Ah. Yeah. 
Yes is plus 500. No is my. I think that's a good bet. If you want to throw 100 bucks down on that. Fuck yeah, I'm betting that right now. 100 bucks on yes that I say it gets yes. canceled. I say yes, they'll be canceled. Um, UEFA Europe canceled. Uh, I doubt it. Well, Italy's got a lot going on. Yeah, but I don't know where UEFA is this year. Um, I'm not sure. World Series of Poker. That's probably in Vegas. I doubt that's going to get canceled. No, that won't get canceled. Hot dog eating contest lines. This is not. You know what's interesting though? You bring that up. Um, the stocks <clears throat> that are going down the most are those uh, Vegas hotels because there's so many Asians that that go to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, there's not, they're not canceling the poker tournament. No, no way. there's not enough. The Asians don't make up the majority of the nope. field, and they make most of their money off broadcast. Exactly. Not on, not on actual seats. Yeah. Let's being see. There. UEFA 2020. Where man, I'm going to bet it's... on the coronavirus today. When I woke up, man, that, I, that, no part of me expected to bet the over-under on the coronavirus. Well, welcome to the Drink It Bros. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, that is amazing. Mm. Italy is the host. Italy is the host of UEFA. So there's ah. a decent chance, and it's in July, I think. So but that's a, canceled. What's yeah. the fucking? What's the line for that? Um, it's plus one thousand for yes. Really? I mean, doesn't there's there's there are rumors right now that the Pope has coronavirus? Yes, there is because he's Strong. canceled all of his shit, and he was cough. I, so I watched it. He was <laughs> coughing and shit the other night. Trying to deliver that speech because mm-hmm. he shakes so many people's hands. Yeah, it's disgusting. And he's eighty three too. Um, That's uh, the top, the top guy in uh, Iran. To the Ayatollah just died from it. Mm-hmm. He just he uh, canceled 71. his Linton retreat yesterday. Canceled. Hmm. Man. Shit's getting wild now. Maybe it's betting a on the coronavirus. That's what we're going to call this episode. Let's bet on the coronavirus, dude. I mean, that's a. I think the uh, over under on deaths at a hundred. That's a really good bet. Yes, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take the Olympics get canceled. I'm going to take the UEFA gets canceled as well. What's the top? How much can you bet on that? Usually they cap it a certain number. Yeah, let me look. Because that's going to get real fucking wet for me. I know I said I wasn't going to bar- bet until March Madness, but I'm going to do it. Bart on it. I'm trying to said. bet five thousand on it right now. <laughs> if it lets you twenty five dollars. Twenty five bucks is the max. Yeah, on that? but it's I mean again, it's a plus one thousand, so shit. Yeah. I'm all in on that. You can make a lot of money on I that. And I think in on that. I think that's a gimme. I think there's so no, do I. I think there's no chance that a wafer goes down, and I don't think that uh, there's under a hundred deaths in the next calendar year. Yeah, there's yeah. no fucking way. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in on that. <laughs> wow, man, you really learn something new every day here on Drinking Bros, don't you? S- fucking slow sports weeks lead to fucking pure chaos sometimes. Well, I mean, yeah, there's that, obviously, and then there's uh, all the stuff that Hamity brings up, you know? Oh, yeah. He's apparently, Drinking Bros podcast is officially spying on Iran. You're at this welcome. Point, which is pretty funny. Goddamn right we are. Um, but what else are we going to do? Eh, what else are we going to do? It's a slow sports week. It is. Slow sports week. So uh, the last bit of news is Wilder has exercised his rematch clause with Fury. Everybody knew. Well, he, he didn't just exercise it. He exercised the expedited version. Yes. Which means they're fighting in July. July, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, it's great for boxing, great for sports fans. Uh, I'm amped about it all the way around. Um, I, I don't know how he beats Fury again. I mean, well, they look, the first fight was a draw. Yeah, I, I thought I smoked in the last fight. This fast, because you're looking at a four month turnaround here, mm-hmm. five months. I don't know how he. He's going to take a month off board. and then do three months of conditioning work. That's all he really needs to do. I mean, he's he doesn't need to learn how to fight again. No, but he his conditioning was bad for this one. It seems. I don't. I don't. I, I don't buy that whole fucking forty. The costume, costume was too thing. heavy. No, I don't either. I think. He was just not in great shape. No, it looked like no. He was his legs were wobbly the whole time. But who so. knows? Who knows? I mean, little things can fuck with you. I, I, I'm going to take Fury in that third one, but I'll definitely <clears> pay for it and watch it. I was entertained in both of those fights. So I'm happy about a three-peat. But the next one, you got to give me Joshua uh, versus the winner, or uh, I'll check out of heavyweight boxing for a while. Um, I'm all done with that. And, and Joshua, I'm tired of him running from people. Fury always fights people. Uh, Joshua does not. So Yeah. 
Let's uh, let's step up to the plate after that one. But uh, I'm in. I'm in for that July. And I think we should have again. Uh, now that it looks like the DNC is making deals, mm-hmm. so Buttigieg, who was in third place in delegates, yep, drops out before Super Tuesday and yeah. immediately endorses Biden. Yep, Klobuchar, who was in fourth place, yep, drops out a day before Super Tuesday uh-huh. and immediately endorses Biden. So clearly, the DNC is offering people campaign funding for the next time they run for whatever they run for Mm -hmm. or biden specifically has offered them cabinet level positions that's how that works it's not illegal or anything like that it would this is how it would have been at the convention anyway yeah um they're just speeding up the process because they hate bernie that much correct and i think it's likely that some other stuff goes down here in the next couple days we'll see what goes down but uh now that it looks like the dnc is gonna exercise because the majority, the vast majority of superdelegates came out and said they would not support Bernie under any circumstances. Mm-hmm. So now that all this stuff is coming into place the kind of the way we thought it was, I think Biden and Trump need to fight. I think we need to have a celebrity boxing match. I'd love to see it. And just let these two dudes wail on each other and see what happens. See what happens. Um, if Biden gets it, we'll see. Um, I think it would be like Holyfield Tyson. Biden would probably bite his ear off or something. Yeah. I could see Biden biting people's ears. So could I. Uh, I, w- I wish we could bet on uh, Super Tuesday tonight. It's going to be fun, kids. I uh, appreciate you staying tuned. Um, look, sign up for Drinking Bro Sports on Facebook. Get in on it. Uh, the brackets are coming up soon. You could win a signed Dennis Rodman jersey. In case you or a loved one goes to North Korea, you'll be able to uh, get out of um, jail with it. That is proven science. Do that now. Uh, D'Anthony, you guys, you have something breaking here? No, I think this is just fake news. What is it? Someone posted that fucking Bloomberg dropped out, but that can't be true. No, let's, uh, we'll hang tight for this one. In case 15 minutes true. ago. No, it's on TV. What TV? It's not on CNN. This would be on CNN if it were true. Hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer in two seconds. No, I, I got nothing on that. Yeah, there's no way. He's he's already spent six hundred million dollars, and he's going to spend at least another billion. Yeah, I, and he's gonna he could he could be the one that fucks over Biden. <laughs> yeah, he could be. I mean, it's going to be a combination of people. Uh, and he just he just purchased a prime time slot for a coronavirus ad. <laughs> that is that that is true. I'm reading that right now. So that is the only thing that has happened. Um, but he is still in. Huh. Wish we could bet on that. That'd be fun. Super Tuesday's fun, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, D'Anthony, enjoy Los Angeles, my friend. I will. Um, wear a mask. No. Um, it doesn't work. That's not how it spreads. <laughs> it's like fucking trying to uh, wear a condom to prevent cancer. It's not how it works. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll be dead from it by the time uh, you get back. I so. can't wait. I know. I know. Uh, if I die, bury me inside the Gucci store. Jesse knows those instructions. For Dan Thinny, Dan Thinny Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. Happy Super Tuesday. <laughs>